slide we want to give kind of a model to show that when you have a conductor um, the electric field at sharp edges is much bigger than the electric field where the curvature is less so this is for instance the, the kind of conductor we want to study we want to prove that the electric field is sharper is uh, stronger at the sharp edges we're going to model this conductor by this kind of model we're going to say that this part can be modeled as a sphere, conducting sphere with a large radius. Then we can make a very uh, thin conducting rod here that connects it to another conducting sphere, but of a smaller size. So the smaller sized sphere, conducting sphere will, will, will be the analogy, analogy of the sharp edge and the large conducting sphere would be an analogy of the part of the conductor that has a, a small cur curvature. So if we can prove here for this problem that the electric field in this region around the small conductor is larger than the electric field around the, la the larger conductor, then we would have kind of um, made kind of this nice model that can prove this idea that the electric field is sharper at, uh, is stronger at sharp edges. So in this uh, model, we're assuming that this distance is huge. This distance is huge. It's much, much bigger than the radius of this conductor, R1, and the radius of this conductor, R2. Let's start and see how we can make this uh, simple uh, argument. So we'll assume that we put a total charge of Q1 plus Q2 on the conducting spheres, and this charge Q1 plus Q2 will arrange itself such that Q1 will be on this conductor and Q2 will be on this conductor. Remember, the conductors are connect connected by another conductor, so all this actually is one big conductor. So if you take out negative charges from the conductor, the positive charge that remains will distribute itself on the surface of both of these conductors, and we're assuming that this rod is so thin that we're going to neglect any buildup of charge on this thin rod. So we're going to assume that the distance between the two conducting spheres is very, very large, much bigger than the radii of both spheres. This will allow us to, to assume in our derivation, it's a very kind of uh, um, big approximation, that these two spheres don't affect each other. If we want to get the potential and electric field over here, we just have to worry about this conductor. If you want to get the potential and electric field over here, you just have to worry about this conductor. That's kind of the model we're taking. It's a simpl simplistic model, but let's see what it will give us. So what, we, what we're after then is what? We're after what's the ratio of the electric field E2 at a point just outside this conductor to the electric field E1 just outside this conductor. We want to see what's this ratio. If we're able to show that E2 is bigger than, much bigger than E1, then this shows that the electric field where the sharp edges happen, then it's much bigger than the electric field where you have uh, not so sharp edges or low, cur low curvature. So the key to this solving this problem uh, is to think what is the electric potential everywhere. We said that we're going to consider the two conductors to be so far apart that we can consider the charge to be uniformly distributed on this conductor, and here it's uniformly distributed. So when we talk about this conductor, we can completely forget this one, and we will talk about this one, we can completely forget this one. Of course, this is a bigger, big assumption, but let's just make this assumption. So that means that the potential at the surface, we've solved the problem of a conductor, and we showed that the potential at the surface is kq over the radius. And we've, this is the same thing, the potential at the surface is kq over the radius. So the other point that we realize is that since this is all one huge conductor, then we've proven also before that every single point on this huge conductor, whether it's here or here or here or here, the potential has to be the same. It has to be exactly the same value. That means that the potential at the surface here is actually exactly the same value as the potential of the surface here. So kq over r is the same as kq over r for the other sphere. When you put, when you equate these two things, ke cancels and you get this relationship between the ratio of the charges to the ratio of the radii. 
this is going to this this is a kind of intermediate result that will help us find the ratio of electric fields so the question now if this conductor you assume it's completely independent and is not affected at all by this one if you get the electric field just outside the surface over here what value would you get and the same thing here if you want to get the electric field just outside this conductor neglecting completely that this conductor exists because the distance is huge what would this electric field be what would this electric field be the electric field due to a point charge so it's kq over r squared and here it's kq over r squared we know from before from the argument about potential that, that this ratio of of uh, charges is equal to this radio, ratio of, ra of radii. So if you take E2 and divide it by E1, this is what you have. And if you simplify, the Ke's can cancel. So you get this. Now Q2 over Q1, I can get it from here. Q2 over Q1 is R2 over R1. So I can replace Q2 over Q1 by R2 over R1. And then one of the R2s will cancel, one of the R1s will cancel. And you get so E2 over E1 turns out to be R1 over R2. Now see what the result says. E2 is the electric field just outside the sphere that has the small radius. E1 is the electric field just outside the sphere that has the large radius. And this is equal to the rate the ratio is equal to the radius of the large conductor over the radius of the small conductor. So this ratio is much bigger than one. So that means that E2 is bigger than E1. So we've kind of proved in a simplistic model that the electric field just outside a conductor that has a small radius is much, big, much bigger, than, it's bigger than the electric field just outside the conductor of a larger radius, which is kind of trying to prove that the electric field at sharp edges is bigger than the electric field where the, at, at parts of the conductor where the curvature is not that big.